to me. Welcome everybody to another edition of Hazel Review. This is a weekend edition. I know we're super pumped. It's that time of year. It's your boy's favorite time of year. We got preseason football kicking off. You're starting to shape up in the MLB and you're going to see who the uh, the playoff contenders are real soon. You know, both the Braves and the Falcons were victorious yesterday. So rise up, go Braves country, chop on, put the hawk on them, all that good shit. Just had SummerSlam. Wasn't a bad show. Good solid seven. We'll give you that right there. So, you know, we got a lot of things going on. Since it's your boy's time of year, plus we're about one month away, maybe two months away, depending on who you are. One month for me. Halloween decorations. My shit goes out first week of September. My shit is out. So we're getting there, people. So I told you guys a few weeks ago I was going to give you guys an update on the Fortnite customized boat. So I am going to do so. So that's not only going to be that, we're going to actually give you guys a Super Yojo edition. As I had a huge, huge haul come in, courtesy of none other than Big Bad Toy Store. They hooked me the fuck up. I got my shit in the mail. I've got several figures to, uh, I done an unboxing of. We got Shipwreck. We got the Cobra Hill. We got Scrap Iron. Copperhead. Man, I haven't got the boat. So we got a great deal to unpack here. On this episode, but before I get too far into the to the weeds and the muck, as they say, I want to give a little love out to Super Seven. You know, I'm always giving them shit about their quality or their their timing and things of this nature. And, and you know, I, as as you give the lumps, you got to give the praise. So a couple of weeks ago, you know, uh, my monster you see behind me, he got took a spill off the shelf, like literally for no reason. He just falls and his ankle snaps completely off. The, the ankle is gone. It's just whoosh, done. There is no more. So, as I have done in the past with Super 7, I reached out to their customer service. And their customer service is always very polite. They will be out of the way to, to see what the problem is, talk with you, and see what they can do to rectify the situation. So with the Thundercats, when I had some issues with them, uh, with bad necks, discoloring on uh, Tigra, uh, the neck on Lino, they, you know, they replaced it, but they sent me <laughs> headless bodies in the mail. And hey, that's no harm, no foul. I was happy. I got my body that's corrected versus, you know, a cracked neck and discolored figure. So, hey, cool. No problem. I get it. You know, yeah. but they went the full nine. They went the entire full nine on Monstar. And they sent me not just a headless body to fix the situation, which would have fixed the situation, no problem. They actually sent me, they sent your boy a brand new in the box, still in the plastic in the box, Monstar. So my hat's off to you. As you see, I got him displayed behind me. I love the figure. He's great. Um, I will say I would have probably waited for the toy version, not just because there's nothing wrong with the figure. It's beautiful. Other than the fact that the toy version is all red. Solid red. I, I just dig that. I don't know why. But that's neither here nor there. That's not what this show's about. Yeah. So we're going to get into it this week. So let's go. We're diving balls deep into this Fortnite customized boat that I did for Copperhead. So as you can see, did a little 360 here on the catwalk. Yeah, the catwalk. So all in all, if you can find one of these at an Ollie's, they're like $15. Even if you aren't a customizer, and I am not, even if you aren't a customizer, it's worth buying this right here to just take a stab at it. It was fun. Um, it's very simple as far as, it's very rudimentary to get it apart. Um, it's got a lot of screws upon the bottom there. You just kind of, you have, there's no way around it. There's these caps that go in the bottom that cover the screw holes and you have to take those out so don't think you're going to get them out and get them back in you're not just don't worry about it it's on the bottom you don't want to see it anyways poke them drag them out unscrew the rest of it pretty much dismantles as you want you just have to figure out what color scheme you want to go with um i am trying to find a good set of decals or uh, stickers for it because i do want some cover emblems on here 
and I was back and forth because you know this kind of general green here is kind of how the entire boat is in the OG version and I was really torn on what color scheme to do this boat because you know I did get a shipwreck in and we'll touch on him a little later that's great by the way so I was almost on the point of making it an olive green black bottom and making it a Joe boat but I was like it's copperhead when copperhead's around you got to have like shipwreck you can see him fighting on land copperhead other than when they're in the swamps or the bayous or whatever or during the deep series where he was a uh, python patrolling so to speak uh he, he wasn't very much of a land lover he was pretty much on the boat that's what he did so i felt like i need to do it for him and i'd seen the uh, cobra, cobra uh eel that uh, several people had done where it's the solid red the crimson red boat and with the black eel looks great uh, i actually really really i actually just sting ready i apologize i don't i don't want to fall into the trap that I fell into on last week's episode where for some damn odd reason your moron ass boy was calling roadblock gung-ho I don't know why the hell I've done that for about five minutes I apologize people I know who the fuck I was talking about and for some odd reason I didn't touch on the fact that my gung-ho looks an awful lot like Marcel Azuna from the Braves I don't, I don't know why but he, he, he's got the Azuna uh, head to him but either way so I went back and forth and I finally decided you know what I'm going to go outside the box. It's going to be a moccasin, but it's going to be a moccasin close to color scheme of Copperhead. So as you can see, that's what I went with. And Copperhead, I've done an uh, unboxing of him as well. And we'll get into that in a few moments. But the color scheme of the moccasin, I went with Copperhead's colors, which was a general green and a grass, I believe grass green. Uh, I didn't do anything special. I took it apart. Um, just went and got some rust oleum, some uh, some Krylon rust oleum uh, spray paint. But to get two in one, that's got the primer in there and the uh, paint itself, uh, and just take it apart and have fun. The uh, one lesson I did learn very early on is that when you're using spray paint, you definitely have to spray from afar. Make sure you have everything you know cordoned off accordingly. I did do that part, but I, I, a couple times I maybe got a little too close. And you will know definitely when that happens because when that happens, when you go back for reassembly, that's where your problem will come into. And that's the only problem I run into in this boat, actually. Everything turned out wonderful. Like the uh, the metallic paint that I used for the uh, boat, uh, for the motor and the missile and a few other odds and ends. One spray, it was done. I, I, my hat's off, that's stellar paint, really good paint. The, the other two, though, it, it took a couple passes, and in some spots, I got like a rough spot here, you know, and then there's a couple spots where it got thick, so when things were going to slide back into place, they didn't slide back quite as well as I had hoped, and uh, as a result, I wound up with some extra screws. I didn't, they didn't get to go back in, but however, it's pretty damn solid. It's, it's, it's sturdy. I hadn't, I don't have any issues. I got the, the ones I needed in place, so to speak, so I mean, it's... It's, it's sturdy, and one of the things I did like was this right here. I will say, upon reassembly, go back and look at your picture of where you took it apart. I did not, and I assembled half this damn thing without realizing this right here snaps into a part that I had done snapped together. So, if you do that, you will regret it. I will tell you that, because then you have to get it right back apart, and it is a bitch. But, however, it's together. You see the pictures. I put the little 360 up. I put some pictures up. Let you guys see what you think. So now let's get into some unboxings. So one of the reasons that I decided to go with this boat, this color scheme, is one, we got Copperhead here. So we did an unboxing of Copperhead, and he looks great. He's got a couple of really cool guns. He's got a little, like, a jungle machete, so to speak. Looks, he, He's a really, really good-looking character, a cool character. I took a lot of time and love and put into this guy, and, and he's one I've been waiting for. He was one of my favorites as a kid. I, I, I don't remember a lot of him on the show, I'll be honest. Uh, I just, his design was really cool to me. I liked him. And there's several of the Joes and, and Cobras that, for whatever reason, they they were throwaways, and, and never in the series or just in a comic, maybe. But just their design was really cool to me. A Techno Viper is, is one of my favorites, and I can't wait 
for that figure to drop. Uh, I'm a little let down by the fact that he's not going to be purple. But it is what it is. So Copperhead, he was one of my ones. And then we got this bad boy right here. How can you not want to have a Cobra boat when you get the Cobra eel? The, man, this guy right here, whether you want to call him Cobra eel, Frogman, uh, however you want to say it. I mean, as a kid, we always, you know, he was a Frogman. This is a legit badass figure. And yes, it is just a repaint of Torpedo. I am aware of this. However, even though he's a repainted tornado, uh, torpedo and he has cooler gear, he's a badass. I love this, this this color decor as a kid. It was one of my favorites. I loved it. Really, really cool. I want to get a flat stand for him so that he can actually be like appearing to be swimming, so to speak. So yes, you can use flat stands for Joes that don't have jetpacks. Set your underwater uh, world up, people. Get imaginative. Hell, we're done as kids. Why not do it when you're 40? I don't know about you. I still want to do it. Moving on from there, the next figure that I got, well, we'll touch on Shipwreck. This guy actually, he embodilizes, or however the hell you want to say it. Correct me on it. Put it in the comments. He got everything you want out of an old 80s Joe. He has it all. He is true. They didn't go crazy with the upgrading. He would, he would have very much fed on the retro card, and I would have been happy. He does have the hats you can take off, and he's got the hair. I don't know who the hell wants to do that, because, I mean, Shipwreck all that, always had that. He's got poly that sticks on his arm. He's got the tattoos. The rope is removable. And I give him a little pistol here, but one of the cool things is that the hook for his rope fits on a little hook here, and he actually has a uh, musket, which is really cool. I was just like, whoa, why not? Why wouldn't he? I mean, he's a scurvy pirate, so to speak. So why, why wouldn't he have a musket? That was that was a really cool touch. I, I like that. And he fits in really well, my Joes. Like, literally, I've, I've started redoing my Joes with risers and things of this nature. So I had to put him next to your girl, Lady J. That's where he's going to reside for the time being between Lady J and Spirit until I get a loose flint i still did not have a loose flint unfortunately so that's the next uh to do for there right there so moving on from there a simple repaint python patrol crimson guard and holy shit i am in love with this figure i don't give a fuck of it it's just a simple deco repaint or not this figure looks badass like I am 110% pleased with it. I'm happy with it. It looks great. The 360, the Python Patrol on the sleeve looks great. I mean, he is just all in all a stellar figure. I, I do see where you could probably take this helmet right here and put it on the Crimson Guard body, the regular Crimson Guard, maybe have like a Crimson Officer. That would be a, a pretty cool what if, if, if you're into customizing. However, I like the Crimson Guard as is. Uh, I am still looking for Retro Card Crimson Guard. But until I get that, this right here is my favorite of the Crimson Guard right now. He's uh, he's pretty stellar, and he has the uh, M16 on the back with the bayonet. He has a sword, and the sword looks really, really cool. So uh, even though the other one did have a sword as well, I felt like that version of the regular Crimson Guard he had to have M16 in hand sitting by the uh, Crimson Twins. That's just, that's his role, that's his duty. And uh, that's what he needs to do. But this guy right here, he is, uh, he, I, I'm gonna put the sword in his hand and he's gonna be a uh, an officer. And I think I'm gonna display him with uh, Cobra Commander. I got uh, some more uh, Python Patrol loose. Got the, uh, the Pit Viper and the Python Patrol that's loose. So I'm gonna probably put all that together with Cobra Commander because they were more yeah, they were loyal. Uh, the Python Patrol was loyal to Cobra Commander. He created them, so that's probably where I'm gonna go with that. There, um, I got to figure out how to display my my Cobras. I've got the Joes done pretty well, but I've got to figure out how to display my Cobras over here. Are just kind of in disarray. I mean, I've even got I bought a three C three D print model printed uh, throne, and I don't even have guys sitting on it yet. I did, however, take some pictures of Destro sitting on it, which turned out to look pretty cool. So, hey, I'm going to throw these on there as well. Give you guys a look, see what you guys think. 
Moving on lastly, Joe Wise, scrap iron. So, when I initially ordered this figure, I was kind of torn on the fact that why is scrap iron a deluxe figure? Because that's what they had him as. He was a deluxe figure. And I was like, he he wasn't, uh, to me, he didn't scream needing to be a deluxe figure. I mean, I would like to see a uh, Destro Iron Grenadier with a little chair, air chair. That's a deluxe figure. You know, may, maybe uh, your General Hawk with a jetpack. That would be a deluxe figure. Not so much scrap iron to me at the time, but I'm gonna say, holy shit, this figure, it impresses. It looks great. You put him out of the box. <laughs> I like the fact that I, I was kind of surprised when they, they done the whole uh, helmetless look for him because you know he, he never takes his helmet off in the show. But the fact that they give him the scarred upside, the uh, white, so to speak, off of uh, Walking Dead, like the iron's been stuck to his head by Megan. That's, that's a cool touch for him because, I mean, he is a, you know, uh, demolitionist, so why wouldn't he have at some point, you know, had some, some scar and some damage or whatnot. And uh, he was always loyal to the Cobra Commander right up until the movie. Then that treacherous piece of shit, or not the movie, the rise of Pentor arise. They, then he become loyal to Mindbender and uh, Destro. So I'm not quite sure who I'm going to fit him in with. But all in all, he's a great figure. He looks cool. I prefer him with the helmet, though. He'd be the, oh, and then the slide people, so that's what happens. You know, Crimson, Crimson Guards take a leap and dive in the water. Maybe he was hot. Maybe he needed to swim. It is Saturday. Who doesn't want to swim on a Saturday? So, hey, there you go. But I do prefer him with the helmet to look. They gave him this little drone remote control, which is pretty cool. I like that. He, other than that, he does really embody the whole, you know, vibe that you got off this figure in 86 so I'm a fan of it I really like it and then when it comes to what makes him a deluxe so he comes with this missile I, I don't know what you want to call it like a drone or whatever but I'm gonna say it actually looks really cool it's it's kind of got some flexibility some mobility the, the coolest part of it is they give you these effects. Like, literally. That's pretty damn neat. Like, if you want to, you can have it in there. Just like that. Without. And no, it's not spring loaded. No, it's not going to give you the pew that you know we had in the 80s. However, it is a cool effect to have. And one of the neat things about it I noticed they did was one's longer than the other one. You got a short one. In this side or however you to, to choose to do it but that way you get the effect of two missiles not just two side by side it's, it's a pretty neat effect it it's mobile I said the only thing I've noticed is tracks tracks are locked in the place they're decor decorative only that's kind of a uh, I'm gonna be honest Hasbro I felt like you could do a little better than that you could give us some working tracks right there, especially when this figure is retailing in the range of, what, 40 bones uh, or whatever it was. Maybe it was a little more, I'm not sure. But I will say he comes with some really cool blast effects. We've even got the smoke at the bottom. And when you start putting, setting them around the figure, depending on how you do, they look pretty damn neat together. This is the one, I'll be honest, I haven't really quite figured out I think maybe like that. Maybe that's the puff. But you get several of these. They look great. They look really cool around him. Especially like this one. This is probably one of my favorites. So if you're into building the dioramas or whatever, that's a pretty cool uh, aspect to have. So it's a neat addition. Uh, I do have Croc Master. So this will definitely definitely be going in with the boat at some point so that's my joe portion of the show before i get out of here though i am going to give one last unboxing that was just uh, it's kind of a surprise this week so i wasn't really expecting it to uh come through but it did and my boy monster i give a lot of love and shout out to him he uh he hooks me up with stuff all the time and uh he and i both we went in the house on the uh Doctor Doom, Captain Marvel, two pack. See, I loved 
the, the Secret Wars Daughter Doom. That was one of my favorite kids grow up. Uh, I'm sorry, favorite figures as a kid growing up. I still have it actually. It's uh, still in mint condition. I have I have one that is in played with that is my actual played with from the 80s edition. Of course, he has none of the de decorative stuff on his chest any longer. However, the rest of the paint is in stellar condition. Then I bought one off eBay that is mint. I wish it was mint OC, but it is not. However, it looks great. And I was at terms with that was gonna be the, the only version of this figure I have ever, ever had. And I was happy with that, till now. Marvel Legends, they, they done a Secret Wars version of that Doom, my favorite version of Doom. And holy shit, it delivers. It looks great. As a monster kept the uh, Captain Marvel, we went in halvesies, as we've done on a few things here. There were like, like the Juggernaut, the uh, Colossus two pack, and I do regret not getting Colossus honestly now. But I'm a Juggernaut fan, so it worked out. Just as this worked out as well, I won't be in regret of not getting Captain Marvel. I'm not a Photon fan. Sorry, people. But this figure looks great. He comes in the unmasked version, out of the box. Which looks really great. They uh they did a great job of capturing that that eighties doom with the good looks. Well, you know, after he takes the powers of the Beyonder. And even the little mask. I mean it is hard to and I'll post some pictures, but the little mask on there, it looks great. The only two flaws I have with this figure at all is like if you put these two together, the mask is way smaller than the face. I know you can't really see it, but the mask is a good bit smaller than the face. It's not to scale. Yeah, I know you're thinking, Hassle, why would it be? Who's going to actually do that? I did that. It was one of the first things I'd done. I put it in his hand, took a picture, because I thought that looked neat, and then I was like, just for shits and giggles, when I changed the heads, how's it going to look? Does it actually fit? Does the eye holes align? So, if the eye holes align, the mouse right here. So, you, you, you're slacking there, Hasbro, I'll give you that. But on the rest of the figure, he looks amazing. The, I kind of wish he'd have had a little more of the uh, the same deco that the original had right here. But this, this Doom head sculpt is great. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the same one off of the uh, Fantastic Four Retro card that's on my wall. But I'm, I, I, I didn't really check. I should have done my homework before I did the show. I didn't, but the only, the only other thing they have flaw-wise is this little belt right here is supposed to be green people, and it does not have his little jetpack that he had in the original figure. There was a little backpack type deal that had his little things at the bottom. It was kind of like jetpacks, but I mean, he's doomed. He doesn't need a jetpack. His, his boots literally do the same shit that Iron Man's does. So, I, I can let that go. Like I said, really, I, I, I do wish this was green, though. I really do wish that was green. I'm not going to try, in the least, to uh, customize this figure and make it green, just for my own amusement, because I will fuck it up. He does have a sleek, very sleek and uh, metallic look to him. They've done a great job with the plastic on this. Whatever they used as a uh, resin for this figure right here, it's great. The coating as well, it's, it's, it's smooth, it's shiny, it looks great. It's just all in all, great. I don't know what else to tell you, people. So, with that being said, let's get out of here, people. Let me give a few shout outs to some people and uh, friends of the show. I'd like to give a shout out to the Clady Clan and the Zone Collectibles, our sponsor, 305 Main Street, Tifton, Georgia. They just done a huge expo yesterday in Douglas. They're spreading uh, the word of everything with their... Uh, their new ventures of uh, Spotlight Media, who you can see your boys on. You can see uh, both of our shows, whether it be the Nerdy Man Room Show or this show, Hustle Review, on Spotlight Media through Roku and on Fire TV. Hey, we're getting there, people. But you better check us out on uh, YouTube as well. We need to like, subscribe, and share. So much love to them. We'd like to give a shout out to our boy, Big Rob, of Big Rob's House of Entertainment, and no Chinese food! Yeah! So, go check him out. He always does some great shows from the road each week. I believe he's in New Orleans right now. So, hey, Big Rob in New Orleans, that's bound to be something magical happening down there. So, go check him out. Give him a few likes, subscribes, and share. And while you're at it, like I said, check out our other show. 
with me and Monster each month, week, however you want to do it. We go on the uh, here and we talk with various people. We have interviews. We do random topics of the day. I believe our next topic is going to be uh, 80s properties for children that were R-rated that should not have been 80s properties for children. That's bound to be a, a conversation starter right there. I mean, hey, we had toys and video games and cartoons that we shouldn't have had, but we did. I miss the 80s. So, that being said, that was this week's The Hazels Review. We hope you enjoyed it. Until then, peace out.